Now we need to know how to go back the other way and convert Cartesian equations into a pair of parametric equations. Now we get to define what the parameter will be. So you can go ahead and call it t, or if in the case of using circles, you can call it theta if you want to. Now similar to before, we've got a slightly different strategy for the linear and quadratic ones or for the circles. The linear and quadratic equations, the easiest way to do it is just to define t as being x, and then you can go ahead and figure out what the other equation is. Now, if you want to use something else, you can. There's multiple answers that are possible, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. With circles, again, you just want to use this sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1, and then adjust it until it looks a lot like the equation that you want, and you can actually just sub x or y in. So a linear example then, and it doesn't get much easier than this, we can literally just say let's let x equal t. And then we can rewrite y, and instead of writing the x, we can just write t. And that's the simplest possible way to get a pair of parametric equations out of a Cartesian equation like this. Now, what would you do if it was rearranged differently or it was more complicated? Well, let's just imagine that this was written this way this time, just to look at a slightly different strategy so that you can see the idea of multiple solutions. This is the exact same straight line as this one, right? Now, if the two things on each side of the equation are equal, couldn't I let t be both of them? It makes sense to me that I could say that t equals y minus 1, but t is also equal to 2x. Now getting these so that x and y are the actual subjects there, I can say that y is equal to t plus 1, just adding 1 to each side, and I can say that x is equal to t over 2. So this is another pair of parametric equations that describes this straight line just as adequately as this one does. Now, this process was definitely easier. I'm just showing you this one because it gives us a bit of a workaround if we end up with equations that are a little bit more complicated um, and have more terms on both sides. We can just follow this process, let t equal this, let t equal that, rearrange it so that we've got our x's and our y's. And in this quadratic example, I've actually given you four different pairs of parametric equations and there'd be plenty more that can be derived straight from the same Cartesian equation. Now, I'm not trying to confuse you, but it is important to recognize that a lot of things will tell the exact same story, but still look a little bit different. So the most straightforward way to do it is just to say, let's let x equal t. And so then I've just subbed in t for x here and said that y equals 4t squared. That's perfectly acceptable. You can stop there and do it that way every time if you like. But if you're looking at a multiple choice question and you're looking at things and working out if they're the same, it's sometimes helpful to be able to dig a bit deeper. What if I was to change this and instead of write 4x squared, I could write it as 2x all squared? Well, then there's two ways I could go here. This one's probably the easier. I could say, let's let t be the 2x part. Now we've got y equals t squared. And we, if we know that t is 2x, then x must be t over 2. I could also say, let's let y be t, and if y is t, then 2x squared must also be t, so just take both sides and let them equal t. Now this one is simple and it's done. This one's a bit more complicated. I've got to say 4x squared is equal to t, so x squared is t over 4, so then x is the positive or the negative square root of t over 2. And the last one over here, I've changed the original um, equation to y over 4 equals x squared, and then I've let t be both sides. So t is y over 4 and t is x squared. And then simplifying, y must be 4t and x must be equal to the plus or minus square root of t. So lots of ways to do the exact same thing. And now an example with a circle. I need to convert x squared plus y squared equals 25 into a pair of parametric equations. So the starting point I need is to use that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. I've actually switched it around here because I know that the x relates to the cos theta and the y relates to the sine theta, so it just makes it a little bit easier for me to spot. Now the trick is to fiddle with this equation until it looks like yours. Now the one thing that's jumping out at me here is that we need this to equal 25, not 1. So starting point, I think, would be just to multiply all three terms by 25. Now I'm going to do a step here that you might later leave out, but I don't want to leave anyone behind. Now, we're trying to get it to the point where it's something squared, not something multiplied by something squared. So to me, it makes sense that we want to make this into some stuff squared. I know that 25 is 5 squared. So if I actually put 5 cos theta in some brackets here and then square that, 
that gives me 25 cos squared theta, doesn't it? And now I can put, do the same thing over here. I've got 5 sine theta all squared equals 25. Now this is looking a lot like the Cartesian equation that I had, except instead of x being squared, I have 5 cos theta. So that tells me that x must be 5 cos theta and y must be this part here, which is 5 sine theta. And that gives me my pair of parametric equations that will similarly define this Cartesian equation.